where we're all friends because we love all things Bravo, pop culture, and can't stop talking. Having too okay. much fun. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yes. Bravo should be fun. I'm Caitlin Marshall, your host here at Besties by Bravo. Allegations, allegedly allegations. Where we're in a safe space to gossip, share our thoughts, and opinions. That girl's a liar. That girl's a liar. <laughs> about the Bravo celebrities, shows, and celebs we love, hate, and, and love to goes, hate. Oh, suddenly now you're so religious. So be cool. Don't be all uncool. He went on a podcast claiming he had a threesome with two women from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Immediately, I was like, I wonder if it's Brandy and Carlton. Because sometimes things may get a little, well, ridiculous uh, oh my god i'm sorry there's a spider <laughs> that is coming down i'm hold on hold on ah! oh my god oh my god it's like the blair witch project or something. Yeah. <laughs> all you can hear in the background yeah. is oh my god has anybody seen my ring oh my god <sighs> I don't want to ruin the party or anything. <laughs> my ring. Oh my god! Can you look on the floor for my ring? God, someone's gonna kill me! Don't mess with me because I will come. What? <laughs> oh. Feel free to leave that in for whatever entertainment purposes. I'm so glad you're here to enjoy the fun. So, thank you for joining me on Besties by Bravo. Hi, besties. Thank you for joining me today on Tuesday, April 16th. I was running a few minutes late. What else is new? Sometimes the show, I'm like, am I holding it together by Elmer's glue and scotch tape? Because my gosh, constant, constant adjustments is what we'll call it. Uh, as I start off this show, y'all, the Bravo verse has been wild the last 24 hours what can i even say i i i really couldn't even make any content yesterday because i was like y'all i cannot keep up i would be back to back to back doing videos so i thought you know what let me just save all the chat about it until i'm here with you besties let's do it now i see here in the youtube live chat simona also hi danny and hi kelly Simona mentioned about Morgan Wade's song Obsessed being leaked onto YouTube. It seems that the record company accidentally posted only the lyrics to YouTube for this song Obsessed. And they weren't even planning to release the song yet. I have it all up right here. Let me go ahead and read from my phone the lyrics to Morgan's Whoops, the C as I'm playing it. The lyrics to Morgan's new song. Are you ready for this one? They start out, you're the only, you're the one they're all talking about. They only see you on the streets when you're walking around. But I've seen you late at night eating takeout. You're the one they're all talking about. Early in the morning when the sun comes up, you're most vul vulnerable. I can't even talk. I'm sorry. It's Tuesday. What can I say? It's been a, a while, 24 hours. Anyway, you're most vulnerable uh, and you're all undone. You're the last thing my heart wants to love early in the morning when the sun comes up. And my entire life is wrapped up in your hazel eyes. Hmm. Baby, we can both sleep when we're dead. I don't know where to begin. Can I hold you to the walls, cave in? Baby, I'm so obsessed. Baby, I'm so obsessed. You're my favorite story. Won't you give me a role? Hmm. Is Kyle an actress with hazel eyes? I think so. Write all my lines. Uh-huh. Of course, it could be lines in a song. And I'll do what I'm told. Keep me around until I'm good and old. You're my favorite story. Won't you give me a role? And it's just more on the hazel eyes, sleeping when you're dead, and how she's so obsessed. Interesting. Interesting. I stand by my thought that this leaked idea of the magazine cover for Morgan and Kyle is not what is going to happen. I truly believe Kyle is going to be doing a music video with Morgan. And while uh, Fall in Love With Me was a bit more cheeky, risque, I think this one will be romantic. 
love, touching gently. I truly believe because remember on buying Beverly Hills, Kyle said there were two, not one, but two Morgan Wade music videos that she was going to go film in uh, Nashville. And so, yeah. Okay. My camera, I, I'm like I said, Elmer's glue and tape today, my friends, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> let's start off with the gossip because, oh my God. Okay. It has been confirmed that Robin Dixon has been let go, fired. Goodbye. See ya. Never from the real housewives of Potomac. Now, Robin, she went on her podcast with Gar Garcelle. Oh my God, with Giselle. I'm getting it together, I swear. And the podcast, you know, Reasonably Shady, that the real Slim Shady was trying to come after for copyright and he lost that one. But she confirmed it. And from what I hear, Ineka is not coming back. We know Candace is not coming back. And congratulations to the Bassets. Candace is pregnant. That's very exciting. I think it's probably the perfect time. I, you know, Candace has got to protect her peace. <laughs> and I, I don't know how we have Potomac without the Green Eyed Monster Twins and Candace, dare I say, without those Green Eyed Monsters. What do we do? Uh, as long as Karen is staying, if we, if we lost the Grand Dom, I don't know what we would do. Wow. So next, it's just been so much, y'all. Alexia. Mm -hmm. Alexia Nepola and her husband, Todd. Well, Todd seems to have maybe blindsided Alexia by filing for divorce. She posted to her Instagram story yesterday. Wow. It said... It was just a text post in this story. It said, I am shocked and heartbroken that Todd has chosen to dissolve our marriage. I will take comfort in the fact that my friends and family will be by my side supporting me during this difficult time. I'm praying for better times ahead. Wow. You know, there had been blinds about them breaking up for a while, but I was pretty surprised by this. I I mean, you know, him not showing up to filming things. It was about more than Adriana, but you know, oh, that little drama queen, Miss Adriana, is thrilled. Sadly, that woman is absolutely thrilled. She can't wait to sit down for that first confessional and be like, Alexia, what happened with you and Todd? Mm-hmm. She is chomping at the bit. Fully. Okay, there's more. There's more. <laughs> Crystal Kung Minkoff is not coming back to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We're getting more casting shakeups. So we know that Anna Marie is not coming back and Crystal is not coming back. My uh, perception of the video that Crystal posted to Instagram tells me Crystal was not the one who made that decision. Okay. And I think she was clear in her messaging that she was not, you know, I, I, uh, I like Crystal. I'm not surprised. I, I would have expected them to give her a friend of role because she, I feel like she really worked for it this season, but yeah, something, something's got to give, something's got to change and it's high time for her to do it. She also said that she was working on other things, another water company. I don't know. But another thing that happened, the Real Housewives of Orange County newbie Jennifer Pedranti, I think is how you say her last name, and her, well, now fiance, Ryan Boyahan, they are engaged. He proposed to her in the Bahamas. Oh, man. I, I On the Thursday show I will be doing with Giorgio, I want him to remind everyone what he found out about Ryan doing some digging. He can explain it better than I can. But Ryan, we know it is not just the Ed Hardy jackets and trucker hats and dick pics. He is not a great fit for this very kind and caring, it seems, mother. Who cares if she's buying knockoff designer stuff? That's Is that her worst offense aside from having an emotional affair? Maybe. 
We also found out Joe Wenberg, I guess her real name is Kaylee, Kaylee Joe. Uh huh. Now, there was a blind that has been posted multiple places. Now, I mean, when I say multiple, it's been on Reddit, it's been on everything. That there was a girl who wrote in, and it looks like it was to Bravo and Cocktail, saying that back in the 2010s, her boyfriend started getting haircuts from someone he referred to as Joseph. <laughs> this was in Milwaukee. And that allegedly he began cheating on this woman with Joe getting his quote unquote weekly haircuts with her. But again, he told his girlfriend at the time her name was Joseph. Bortzi is not the first person to think it's cute to call Joe Joseph. <laughs> Just what the hell? And uh, allegedly Joseph, Joe Wenberg, and this young man decided to move out to Los Angeles and go on some sort of a quote unquote bizarre spiritual journey together. And this person very much connected how interesting it was that Schwartz and Joe referred to their relationship or lack thereof as a journey. Interesting. Uh, some sad news is that if you've ever seen Kyle Marissa Roth, she's a TikToker. She would do a lot of blind items. She'd talk about a lot of Bravo, a lot of things in general. She did pass away. Um, you know, she if you can't recall right off the top of your head, she would use a lot of times that bold glamour filter. Um, I don't think she was doing it seriously like some people do, but she would I mean, she would post constantly and she would have all these blind items that she would be just giving to the public. So I just want to say I'm very sorry to her family and uh, just thoughts, prayers, love. And I mean that in the way of not sarcasm for thoughts and prayers. I truly mean that. So I'm very sorry to hear about that. I don't know how I got through all of that so quickly. <laughs> because <laughs> it was a lot yesterday. But something else that I did notice that I posted about on my TikTok yesterday was there is a video that on TikTok, Brit.n.co posted quite a while ago, back in the middle of Scandaval, showing Rachel and Ariana at one of the Tom Sandoval and the Most Extra shows. And wouldn't you know, Joe is in this video as well. This video was allegedly taken during in December of 2022. And it was in January of 2023 that Joe, Rachel, and the Toms went to Big Bear. And it was Joe and Rachel who drove together that multi-hour trip. And yet, Joe claims she thought Ariana and Tom were broken up. And she had no idea that Sandoval and Rachel were doing the dirty. Because she was so focused on Tom Schwartz. Okay. I think that uh, disproves completely the entire statement of that. And I, I don't think it's too difficult to disprove it by looking at the videos. She's there with Ariana and Rachel. Pretty sick. And it makes me wonder why so many people are believing every single thing Joe is saying. And I mean, when I tell y'all, the people have been coming for me so hard on TikTok for quote unquote bullying Joe. It has been out of this world. I'm it's at the point where I have to just delete some comments to protect my own peace because like y'all come on. But I I don't think Joe is the sweet precious nice girl we all are she's wanting us all to be led to believe. Let's put it that way. Okay. Now there's supposedly something very big coming on Summer House. Do I know what? No. But something's apparently coming. Some bomb. And I also keep hearing that this season is going to really turn in Lindsay's favor, which is hard after the way she came right out the gate with the cocaine Carl thing. <laughs> Jesus. But I'm hearing it is really going to turn in her favor, and I'm interested to see how. Uh, I'm also hearing rumors questioning what's going on with Amanda and Kyle that they, in a way that they seem very happy. We, we will wait and see for certain confirmations on that. I shouldn't have even opened my mouth on that, but I'm live and I already did it. <laughs> Damn it. Should we get into Summer House some, shall we?
Okay. Let's do summer house right now, my friends. Well, I'm trying to keep this episode a little more short and sweet, but I my problem is I love details sometimes. I really do. And I got into some of the details. I did. So we pick that episode back up at the Italian dinner where Kyle and Amanda are just having the most awkward interaction in front of the entire house. Like, y'all, come on. Either have it out fully or just take it behind closed doors and put on a happy face because this is supposed to be the season where Carl and Lindsay are taking all the fighting. <laughs> they just didn't know it yet. They didn't. But Kyle is most concerned about how disconnected he is going to feel if he and Amanda move to the burbs. And Lindsay tells him that he needs to get over it because as a man, he needs to deal with it, especially if they're going to have kids. Oh my God, Carl's face. Carl, they zoom in on Carl's face and he's like, what? 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 It, babe, babe, what do you mean? What do I have to deal with? Well, Lindsay makes all the money and could make the decision about moving at that moment anyway. So... Tough shit, Carl. Kyle wants to be in a better place of communication with Amanda before they move to the suburbs because he claims he would be very lonely. Now, I do understand you would feel a little more disconnected. However, may I remind y'all, if as long as they don't move too far south or west in New Jersey, they would be no more than an hour drive. And that's a big radius that they would have from the city. Okay. And there are, guess what? Subways, buses, ride shares, all of that. So I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it, Kyle. I don't. You just want to be able to go walk to the bar, which fair. Okay. If that's what your life revolves around, then go right ahead. So they, they all go in and Paige and Sierra and Amanda talk and Paige asks Amanda how she feels when Kyle says stuff like he did on national television. And I love a breaking of the fourth wall. It literally gets me so hyped up. I freaking love it. Good. Like inject that fourth wall break into my veins. Thank you very much. And Amanda says that when they get home, he's basically all nice to her. And Paige tells Amanda, after seeing you how you were with the dogs the, the weekend that they were here, you're going to be a better mother than any of us. And then she looks over at Sierra and she's like, that wasn't a dig at you. Just a compliment to her. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I it's like Paige can rarely do any wrong in my eyes. And I that's just how I feel. It's how I feel. It's my opinion. So I love how everyone downstairs is making tinfoil hats and the timing of it all, because that's or at least the way it's edited, because that is the moment when Paige starts FaceTiming. Hi, chicken. The perfection of it. Perfection. Because we know Craig loves a tinfoil hat. Okay. Am I right or am I wrong? The next day, they're all planning out the beach day where they're playing volleyball and they clearly, as in the producers, the editors, the showrunners, want us to know that Jesse is not only Jesse Solomon, excuse me, because you cannot just say Jesse. It has to be Jesse Solomon. He is not only physically Carl 2.0, but apparently the volleyball game Jeans run really freaking deep with these two. And did I care at all to hear about their achievements in men's volleyball? No. I don't know about y'all. Maybe it's just me. But my high school didn't have a men's volleyball team. And, you know, there were the three big high schools where I grew up. And we had a lot of NCAA and professional athletes come out of there. Okay? Okay. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to drop the names because it would just be weird at this point. But if you think of one of the most famous basketball players my age, one of the most famous, I did go to junior high with him and I was friends with him. And that's just one of the many. So we didn't have men's volleyball. It was only women's. And I, I find, find it interesting. Maybe it's like an East Coast thing. I don't know. Did Carl grow up on the East Coast? I think he did. I think. Lindsay said his parents were in New Jersey, or at least it's where they are now. So they're split into teams that are the lifeguards and the surfers, and they're supposed to dress accordingly. Well, Amanda apparently told Kyle, I'm so sure she did, truly. And he didn't pack any quote unquote lifeguard outfits as in like red and white. Simple, simple Kyle. So Sierra gives him her one piece swimsuit and I'm 
Kyle must be kind of petite. I'm assuming he is. I mean, I feel like everyone looks petite next to Carl and Jesse Solomon, whether or not they're 5'2 or 5'10. But uh, he, in order to fit into Sears swimsuit, my God. So they get to the beach and they're sitting and they're all kind of unpacking and settling in. And Lindsay goes, here, babe, here's a sandwich to Carl. And Paige is like, wow, you must be in love. She made you a sandwich. How many sandwiches have you made for me? Who, like, I, I wonder where their minds are going sometimes. Like, do they genuinely have that moment where it's like, this is going to be an iconic line? I wonder, uh, because <laughs> I I feel like you couldn't predict that, but at the same time, maybe you could. Oh my God, they play volleyball. Don't care. Let, let's be real. Don't care. Don't care. And Kyle and Amanda go and talk. Mm, Kyle, 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 Kyle. You know, I, I know that I tend to always err on the side of women because obviously, but wow, you may, when, when there are men like this on Bravo, you make it so very easy <laughs> to be against you. I mean, so Kyle tells Amanda that he feels they couldn't get on the same page the night before. She tells him that, she, that he's on her shit list. And after being out until 4 a.m. the night before, he got this huge attitude with her, which is exactly what happened. So she feels he's looking for something to be mad at her about just because she's mad at him. And damn besties, if that ain't the truth. Nail, head, Amanda, one, Kyle, zero, boom. Forget the volleyball game. This is where we're keeping score. So he says he doesn't see it the same way she does. Of course you don't, Kyle. Because if you look at it from her point of view, you are no longer a victim. <laughs> You're no longer poor, pitiful Kyle. Oh, no, Kyle. Y'all, I'm never getting that brand ambassador job at Loverboy. <laughs> it's fine. Now well, I'll move on. And he, uh, she, he says he's very fixated. Are you, though? On improving their communication. If you were fixated on improving your communication... You wouldn't have had your wife sitting there looking like, what the effing hell are you talking about when you declared you couldn't move to the suburbs? Because clearly you haven't communicated that to her. And she's communicating simple things such as what outfits you need to be packing for your weekend away. That is literally your job. And you're not hearing it or listening or processing. Yeah, damn. She's getting frustrated and telling him, that he just says bullshit just to say it. And sometimes, yeah, I think that, you know, some, but not all feelings, you know, are bullshit. And it's feelings can't necessarily be wrong. So he basically, oh, the way I felt my own blood boil, tells her to calm down, you know, essentially. It's that thing that men love to do because he tells her she's at a nine right now, but he's trying to have a heart to heart with her. Oh, my God. You know, when she tells him she's not exactly wanting to do that right now, it's because she knows he's going to try and make her look like an asshole again on national television, and she's not doing this shit in front of the cameras anymore. She's made that clear before when they've gotten in, into it in their bedroom, where she's like, Kyle, I'm not doing this with you. Because he's going to act like a victim. Period. Which this word seems to be one of the favorites of the Summer House crew. Am I right? At least judging from the more to come on Summer House. We're not there yet, though. So when she says, I'm not in the mood to have a sweet, kind, heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Like, I'm frustrated. And he replies, oh, my God, y'all. He replies, noted. I can't move to the suburbs if I'm having, like, a one-way relationship with you. And you know what? I'm proud of her for saying it this way to him. Okay? And I'll tell you why. Because she goes, you don't like when I have a stance on something. Because what she could have said was, you don't like when I call you out on your shit, Kyle, after you talk shit to me and about me. And then if she had listed all the things that he had said about her to Paige. See, I... My petty ass might have gone there. You want to embarrass me on national television, sir? I will destroy you, okay? <laughs> no, no, sir. Sir? Oh, my God. And then, so she has growth, okay? She has growth. But this mullet 
man monster tells her your stance is bullshit. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. My pearls were clutched. My head would have spun around like the exorcist. There would have been pea soup all over that beach. <laughs> sir, sir, sir. She just gives him the, okay, okay. Like, keep digging. Keep digging that grave of yours. Keep going. Because you're in so much shit when we get back to the city and that two-hour car ride is going to be hell for your little bitch ass, isn't it? Uh-huh. I, I, listen, I would cut his mullet off in his sleep. I would. There, I said it. He tries to say that just because he's out until 4 a.m., it's not a reason to hate him. Well, Kyle, she never said she hated you. She hates that you stay out until 4 a.m. And we find even more reason why she hates it, aside from the obvious reasons. Because the way I would have strangled yo ass. We're getting there. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Anyway, breathe. Amanda points out when he goes out, there's just always someone else to meet and some other bar to go to and another party, another round, I'm sure, of skiing that he has to do. Maybe, allegedly, who knows? Honestly, I would hate that too. I would hate it. it you know, it's like one thing, if, if you're okay with it to a certain extent, to accept that in your partner, as in, it's just like who they are. He'll grow out of it when they're in their 20s. And maybe, maybe depending on the person, early 30s, if that, if they, if who they are is staying out until 4 a.m. and that's what brings them the biggest joy in life, okay, but we got to have a talk about slowing down at some point. And I don't want, I'm not trying to be an ageist here and I'm not an ageist. I don't believe I am, but hey, you know, after 30 effing five years it doesn't sound like fun to stay out until 4 a.m. any time, but certainly not more than once a year. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. And he goes, I'm a very social person and it is lonely as fuck being married to you because you don't talk to me. Mm. That's when she's like, okay, Kyle. Okay, I know what you're trying to do. And she just says, okay, and starts walking away because she knows he's gearing up to try and have it all out in front of the cameras, and she is not playing that ball game. She wouldn't even play the volleyball game, Kyle. What makes you think that she'll play this ball game? Hmm? But she could keep score on her fingers during the volleyball game. Maybe she'll keep score on her fingers during this conversation. I highly doubt she even needs to do that. She'll remember. But what infuriates me a little bit further is he immediately asks, what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know why that sent me over the edge. It sent me in, in a bad way, in a bad way. Y'all, I got to tell you about like how maybe I'm extra angry today because let me, I know some of you hate it when I start talking about my personal life, but guess what? I'm a human being and I have a personal life. I took my son, my two and a half year old, precious darling toddler to the playground yesterday. And he is, he's very sweet to other kids. He is. Um, I've never really had an issue with him going up and being mean to any kid. He just wants to make friends. And this asshole kid that was like maybe not quite three. I'm, 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 you know, maybe five yards away. And he walks up and kicks wood chips into my son's face. When my son, they were doing that weird, you know, like toddler powwow standoff where they just stare at each other and try to decide if they're going to communicate in their language and be friends. You know, like that weird toddler thing that like if adults did that to each other and just got in each other's faces and stared, someone would actually be punched in the face. And I, I have never yelled at any person's child the way I yelled at this kid. Hey, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that hay came from the deepest depths of my own ovaries. So don't kick him. And I I was almost like surprised by my own visceral reaction. And when I tell you the number of shower fights I've had regarding this child's mother, who apparently has had multiple complaints to the office of this giant community we live in, and people will tell her to keep her child away from theirs. Guess what? I was ready to throw hands at a playground. 
because my sweet baby angel sits down. And he got so embarrassed. His face turns red. He didn't physically get hurt. And he starts tearing up and he just wanted to go home. I think I'm going to have to get into like Taekwondo or something so that I know how to just like kick some ass. Anyway, that might explain why I am feeling so angry today. It is deep in the gut. So anywho, back to Summer House. <laughs> they get back to the house. And this moment in the kitchen sums up Kyle Cook and who he is as a person to a T. Because they made pizza and Paige tells him as he's reaching for a piece, she literally says, careful, it's hot. He straight up ignores her because, my God, how dare a woman tell him what to do? A woman couldn't possibly have his best interest. And this dumbass takes a bite. So he is as dramatic as humanly possible, losing his mind. And Paige is so used to Kyle's histrionics that she is completely unfazed by it. And I'm sorry, but this, I know I'm cursing a lot this episode. And I got a review about the foul language. Well, I put that it's explicit, so shut up. Sometimes cursing actually does really stress. And if you don't believe me, it's science. Look it up. But Paige looks at Kyle and she just goes, I told you it was hot, you stupid fuck. <laughs> it's exactly how Kyle lives his life. He's like, oh, let someone give me a piece of advice. I will ignore it. And I will do the stupid thing and act like it is the end of the world when it suddenly blows up in my face. Like, oh my God, what is that? The consequences of my own actions? Oh. Not consequences. That's literally what that said to me. As Sierra goes upstairs and she FaceTimes West. They're talking while he's at this wedding in like Montana. And the producer asks her in confessional if it surprises her that she misses him. And <laughs> Sierra's just like, um, yes, I don't have chemistry with everyone. I don't get along with everyone. And when I like someone, I like them. Okay. She's having a good season. So let's just, you know, she's nervous that this may not be reciprocated. But I have heard that they are not seeing each other anymore. Uh, you know, it's about to be like a Sam and Corey situation, I'm, I'm fearing. And then Kyle comes outside blowing his lifeguard whistle at Amanda and Paige while they're grilling hot dogs and yells that there is a propane shortage. Like, true. That's true. That 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 was true. But like, also, why are you so annoying? You're like the most annoying version of, of a like dad joke, a walking dad joke sometimes. I'm sorry, I'm hard on Kyle this episode because he really bothered me and I can't stand it when someone is so set on making themselves a victim and will not just admit their own faults, but instead, nope, it's her fault. It's her fault. It's an Amanda's. Okay. But see, this is why I love Paige DeSorbo. I'm going, I just, there are very few people on this network that I truly say I would like to be friends with. Paige DeSorbo is one of them because I love that she just looks at Amanda after she tells her she she is just so ready to murder Kyle. And Paige is like, put a bristle in his hot dog. <laughs> uh, so Jesse Carl, Paige, and Danielle are getting ready to go to a place called Calissa and going out. And Sierra, Lindsay, Andrea, and Amanda are staying home. And <laughs> in information that was thrust upon us, oh, why did I use that word? In information that was forced upon, oh God, okay, in information, <laughs> I can't find the right word for this, that was, no, nope, it put into our brains that we didn't ask for. Lindsay and Carl call Carl's penis CJ as in Carl Jr. Why? Why did I have, I don't want to know that. Sometimes it, sometimes it's a little too much. <laughs> so while they're all at this place called Calissa, as in you know, the crew I mentioned, Kyle sits in between Danielle and Paige and has his legs crossed, you know, with his knees closed. And Paige is just ready to pick on Kyle because she knows he has been pissing Amanda off. So she's like, don't worry, Amanda. I'm going to give him shit while you're not here because I'm doing it in your stead. Don't worry. And Paige asks Danielle if it gives her the ick if a guy sits like that rather than ankle crossed at the knee with his entire groin open and taking up more space. And Danielle's like, no, that means he's comfortable in his skin. I actually like it. And it's it was really funny on the after show. The girls were listing their icks. 
And it doesn't seem like Paige and Sierra were like 1000% serious, but it was pretty funny because Paige was like umbrellas because they're for girls. They're not for boys. Although I do recall Craig having an umbrella at Peach's and Little Craig's uh, wedding that I think Paige went with him to, if I recall. <laughs> and Paige says also, when he gets excited about something, don't be excited. Just be miserable. Be miserable. It's icky for you to be happy. Okay. So then Gabby's list was also like one set of bedding, gross luggage. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but when Danielle says she likes it, when guys cross their legs like that, Paige just goes, well, my boyfriend's sows, so. <laughs> true, true. Facts, factual. At the house, Amanda is chugging ranch, and somewhere out there, Stassi Schroeder is saying, Dracarys. I don't know, because she's that excited. Game of Thrones, ranch, murder, that's it. And West is brought up, and Lindsay is already trying to plant the seed of doubt with Sierra by asking if she takes him seriously when he talks because he's such a flirty person. Okay. And Amanda tries to kind of help Sierra out with that because she's like, well, maybe he's different with Sierra. So while they're out, Paige is saying that this is the best they've all gotten along. And I am truly wondering, y'all, how many times are we going to have to hear them say, this is the best we've ever gotten along oh my god it's the best we've ever gotten along before oh my god you guys it's the best we've ever gotten along because do you notice the only time Lindsay or Paige say that is when the other is not in the room <laughs> Paige is never there when Lindsay says it and Lindsay is never there when Paige says it telling is it not so uh, Paige tells Danielle that it seems like she and Lindsay are moving forward really well. And Danielle agrees. And she says to them that, you know, she's not going to be getting as involved regarding Carl and Lindsay's relationship anymore. She just is going to stand back a little bit. Well, Kyle starts in saying, yeah, I'm like having a really great summer. But he wants to feel like he's on the same page with Amanda. And Paige, like I said, she was like, Amanda's not here, so I am going to continue to give Kyle shit in her stead, okay? And she looks at Kyle, and she just goes, hey, you know what? I know what you should do. Stop being such a fucking dick to her. And his response is not even remotely attempting at having any sense of humor, any fun, because that would conflict with the victim act that he's trying so hard to play at. It's like, I'm not a dick. Yeah, actually, you are. You are. But okay. You have the ability to not be like that, but you're being kind of a dick to your wife. What can I say? It's just facts. Facts, Kyle. And, you know, Paige is telling, or he says in confessional that he doesn't know if Amanda even likes him. And, okay. Well, Kyle needs the world's smallest violin because he is writing this victimhood so damn hard. And I find it so frustrating because Kyle and Amanda seem to have that type of play fighting relationship where it's like, oh my God, you want to know the highlight of my week? Kyle left. <laughs> That's how they are. And he acts all like, oh, the whole ball and chain. That's their shtick. Maybe they need to talk about how they like to flirt and stop flirting that way if that's how they that get their own feelings hurt. And uh, Paige has said at this point, you know, it's I talked to Amanda about how she starts things and there are some digs that she makes that are too much. And Kyle says it's not the digs. It's that he went through her phone without her knowing as in Amanda's phone, his wife's phone without her knowing. And what his complaint is, is that there wasn't a single photo of him in her camera roll and he starts tearing up. Kyle, give me a break. Give me a break. I mean, right now, the only photos I would expect on Amanda's phone are screenshots of things she needs to save, of the dogs, and of her outfits and photos for Instagram and promotional photos. Why don't you take a photo? Of course, Paige and Sierra listed that as one of their icks when a guy's like, can you take a photo of us? First of all, I love that, okay? Jesus. Kyle, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. 
<laughs> it's like his thing is that she doesn't have photos of him while he invaded her privacy to look. And her thing is, hey, could you not stay out until 4 a.m. doing possibly more things than just boozing when you have a history of not being faithful? I mean, Jesus take the wheel from everyone. It's wild. Wild. But meanwhile, back at the house, Andrea is playing this card game or pulling out this card game that's like, oh my God, I hate it when they do these things because it's never good for anyone who answers. It's never good. He reads off a card and he says, rate your le sex life on a scale of one to 10. And Lindsay immediately, she doesn't even let anyone else answer. She is frustrated because she says two and a half and that you have to have sex to even rate it. And that they had sex earlier that day for the first time in a couple of weeks, but nobody crossed that finish line. And Amanda is flabbergasted. So, you know what? At least it sounds like there must be something right going on in Kyle and Amanda's relationship regarding at least the bedroom because Amanda is just appalled at the idea that neither one of them found the end of the race. My gosh. Lindsay says in her confessional that she's been so patient with Carl and that she that he just wants to make her happy. And also that if someone isn't ambitious and matching her drive, it doesn't turn her on to constantly have to light the fire for him. Yikes. Mm hmm mm hmm Okay. She says he basically gets two in his head during the Nike time, and that's normal, to be fair, for someone who's more newly sober. That's, that's pretty normal. They don't, they're not used to doing that. And it's awkward if you're used to substances help you lose any of your inhibitions. So I, I think it's a normal thing that they're needing to work through. Her solution for him was to do it more often, to take the pressure off. And she says the thing that Carl hates most in life is disappointing me. Ooh. You know, I got to be honest here. I don't understand truly the people who will uh, talk about their sex life with their partner that openly with anyone who is not very, very, very close to them. I feel like it's not only, I mean, she's not only embarrassing her partner. It, I mean, and this is going to be so sexist, but I know we all kind of have to acknowledge that for a man to have that out there, you want to talk about emasculating him, just chopping him off at the knees. Jeez. <laughs> yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay. So Danielle, Paige, and Carl come home, but Jesse and Kyle are still out, clearly. Well, we see that it's after 3 a.m., and Jesse brings back his first girl, Camille. Was she British? I... Her accent was, I think she was British. I feel like she was British. She's cute blonde. And he gets her to go into the hot tub, even though she has no swimsuit. And Sierra goes to Paige's room to tell her Jesse has a girl. And meanwhile, in the kitchen, Kyle is fighting ghosts and starting to pass out right in front of the golden Oreos. I mean, he's literally fighting ghosts. It's kung fu fighting happening in there. Now, he goes straight up, walks in while Amanda is asleep at 3.55 a.m. And this is where I'm telling you the number one part of it is, and I don't know why men do this. <laughs> and he's not the only one. God, I'm really hating on men lately. I'm so sorry. I don't hate men. Just some men. <laughs> some of you suck. Some of you deserve to rot in hail. Um, he immediately walks in and he goes, Amanda. The way <laughs> I would murder that man. If you're going to come strolling in, not a full 48 hours after we got into it over you coming home at 4 a.m. And you're going to come home five minutes on the dot before 4 a.m. You better be quiet as a church mouse, young man. <laughs> but he wakes her up. <laughs> it's just like, how stupid are you? Was Kyle that kid in high school that like 
just because if he knew he was late for curfew, came in, mom, trying to like get ahead of the problem. What? Ugh. I know he was drunk, but God. <sighs> and those witching hours, you know, I used to say this when my son was a newborn. The hours between 2 and 5 a.m. are the hardest to be woken up, especially without your consent. Oh, God. So they all decide, you know, they're going to pack up and head out to the city the next morning. And I am so grateful, feeling blessed and not stressed that I am not stuck in that car with Amanda and Kyle because she is so mad at him. <laughs> and he is so clearly hung over. He looks miserable for so many reasons. He even tries to like joke at her and talk to her. And it is just such thick, dead silence. In New York, just so we can be reminded that West is still on the show, he meets up with his great aunt. And honestly, the most we got out of that little get together was that he was uh, a high school and college football player. And he had his heart broken by his high school girlfriend. We also find out he hasn't had an actual, according to him, on paper relationship since he was 20 years old. Wow. Okay. And I, what, he's like 29, 28, 29. Sierra goes to her manager, her new manager, who tells her that the goal for them moving forward, he is ready to launch her career. He want, I Clearly, he wants to make her the next Hadid. He wants to make her the next Hamlin girl. He wants to make her, you know, all of the things. And he says their goal is to get her in Sports Illustrated, go to Paris Fashion Week and all of that. And she's going to be much busier now and has to focus on her image in her career she's building. So she won't have that time to cultivate and grow and nurture those relationships she has. And hopefully they'll be there when she comes back. Well, we all know what that means. She and West. Don't know. Gotta be done, though. Gotta be. Oh, man. Kyle and Amanda. We go on over to their home where a relationship coach comes to their house. And they sit down. He says that after Amanda quit her job to work for Loverboy, it was just basically one of the most wonderful things. But that he will be constantly saying to her that she needs to do more. And this makes Amanda cry because she says him doing that makes her feel like she's not good enough and she's questioning herself, but that she tells herself she knows she's good enough and all of that. And I noticed there are different types of therapists, life coaches, relationship coaches, the kind who listen and just repeat back to you what's being said as a way of validating, I think. And then there are some who take in what you're saying and offer advice along with validation. She just repeats back everything they say essentially and adds the word insecurity insecurity is an insecure she the coach says it sounds like it's an insecurity for you and keeps saying that they both have a bunch of insecurities with each other so kyle tells the coach that he feels like amanda doesn't like him and that he feels like he erases any progress he's made regarding moving forward with amanda and showing he's changing his over the top partying ways and that it just completely gets erased whenever he goes out on a bender. Kyle, you are in your 40s. Why are you going on benders? What is a bend? Like, it's not necessary. <sighs> okay. Amanda points out that Kyle knows what's going to make her upset. And that he chooses to do it anyway. He brings up when he cheated on her five years ago or because we got to keep on brand with the show. The Chiron at the bottom of the flashback says five summers ago. Couldn't just be five years ago. And Amanda says there's not a reason to be out so late with people he doesn't know. And that instead of being apologetic the next day, he gets mad at her for being upset with him. Like, come on. That's exactly what it is. And Amanda makes some clarifications when she's in confessional. She says people bring up Kyle cheating on her all the time and that really her whole issue is about the, she says PTSD, but that's not, you know, it's the trauma response that has followed since then because it's not even about the act of cheating at this point. And here's the case in point of that. 
you know, when she called him 40 times, it was like a summer or two ago because he was out and not answering and she didn't know where he was. And she was very clearly disturbed and upset by it. So yeah, I, I don't know how, I, listen, kudos to anyone who can do the work and work in therapy and work through any type of infidelity. I would have to commit a murder. I think, oh my God, I'm so murderous today. I'm so sorry. Gosh, I'm going to stop listening to murder podcasts too. <laughs> it's been on my playlist. Maybe I need to listen to something nicer. But the therapist, coach, what have you, just says more insecurity, blah, 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 insecurities, insecurity with each other, blah, 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 blah. Unresolved for the most part, but they, they're working on it. We're ending the episode with Lindsay going to try on her wedding dress and her bridesmaids are there and Gabby and Danielle come. And I just felt, do you know what I'm talking about y'all? When Lindsay was looking Danielle up and down and Danielle was in that kind of like blue tweed print plaid little set, really cute because the background was white. And you notice the only person who was wearing white was Lindsay, but Danielle wore it as her something blue. I have to say Lindsay's dress to me was Stunning. Oh my God. She looked incredible. Let me just say that. And uh, Danielle's tearing up as she's talking with her and Lindsay, you know, they just have this heart to heart and they kind of run through a little bit of what they've been through. And Lindsay says, this is the fairy tale ending she gave up on two years ago. Oh my God. Breaks my heart to even think about having to go back and watch that. Oh my God. <laughs> And in confessional, Lindsay says that I feel like I have imposter syndrome and I feel so blessed to fall in love with my best friend. Oh, God. Well, we get one of those more to come on Summer House this season. And it's a lot of boobs being pulled out. Paige asks West if he's hooking up with other women, which I said, I'm going to remind y'all, I'm pretty sure it was the last episode that I did on Summer House that I guarantee he is because of some of his verbiage regarding, you know, he's a warm-blooded male. He needs to get it in. Mm -hmm. I love West, but come on. And sadly, we see Jesse saying, you know, when he's with his mother uh, coming up that the doctor found something abnormal, which if you recall, he has dealt with prostate cancer twice now. He's very young to be dealing with that, which is scary. Basically, Kyle and Amanda get worse. And we see Lindsay and Carl fighting where she's telling him, he's asking her to be something she's not. And then eventually, and, he, and as he's doing that, she's saying that Carl has the full cojones to be yelling at her, because you're perpetually the victim. Woo. I told y'all, there's an angry man in there. It's under the surface. Not saying Lindsay's been in the right hardly at all, ever. <laughs> but I just, I have a gut feeling. I trust the gut. My gut is usually right. And Kyle ends up asking him if he can actually, asking Carl if he can actually see himself marrying Lindsay. And Carl's like shaking his head no. All of that. Looks like it's, I mean, we've got a lot more season left, even though, I mean, we're in episode eight. But uh, let me just go ahead and let y'all know. Subscribe to YouTube. Like the videos, please. Besties by Brav on YouTube. Uh, join the lives. I'm trying to just continue this on. And I love seeing this chat lit up. So let me go ahead and just say hello, hello, hello. I'm going to see it. I try and go through this as quickly as I can. I said hello to Simona Kelly. Hi, Tay Tay. Hi, Danny. Hi, June. And uh, hi, Lucy. Hi, Adam. And uh, oh, thank you, June. You know what? I appreciate that you enjoy hearing about my life because, you know, sometimes I'm like, do people care? <laughs> Would you prefer a robot? It's, you know, fine either way. Although sometimes it hurts my feelings. <laughs> I'll get over it, I swear. Uh, can you leave a five-star review and write a nice little something something in whatever app capacity you listen to the audio of besties by bravo and go give besties by caitlin a follow on instagram and tiktok i am trying to post co content as much as possible I'm trying to keep up my friends also check out the merch that i have made it is uh yeah i've got i've really 
bulked it up. Let me just say that. Uh, that's Pop Culture Besties on Etsy. The link will be in the show notes. But also, if you, because today is Vanderpump Rules in the Valley Day, if you are feeling like you're missing out on the Valley recaps on this podcast, because Giorgio and I do the Vanderpump Rules recaps on Thursdays, I am doing the Valley recaps with Giorgio on his podcast. Giorgio says, go listen to that. He typically, I believe, releases them either on Wednesday or Thursday. You know, it's it's a full-time job here, my friends. But I am so glad to have had all of you join me. And I just can't wait to see y'all on Thursday. So I will see you then. Bye, besties.